Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I said that I would permit myself to speak in English for those of you who have not yet fully mastered the Hebrew language. Of course, I'd like to repeat the welcome and the thanks that were so eloquently expressed by Dr. John Loike. Uh, our thanks go most specifically to him because it was his initiative five years ago and his indefatigable energy that brought about the first conference and he's relentless and he was the one who forced us willingly to have this second conference. In a sense this is a sort of a continuation of the conference we had five years ago and it's a real pleasure to see once again familiar faces and friendships that we formed five years ago. But uh, in fact, it's also the culmination of the summit of a new program which we began a year ago and which has been carried on throughout the whole of this year. A program which we call Nitzotzot, Sparks. In this program, we have invited leading scholars from the different faculties of the university and from outside the university to present their latest thinking, their new theses, in whichever area of expertise that they have been involved in, whether it be economics, um, biophysics, uh, eco um, sociology, psychology, and so forth, to present them to us and to have one of our senior students from the Institute of Higher Torah Studies over here to respond and to try to express to us what are the implications of these innovative thoughts within the field of halakha, of Jewish law. And then we have opened the panel and our Rosh Beit Midrash, Rab Shabtai Rappaport has given a short lecture explaining the complexities of the relationship between these new areas of discovery, of scientific discovery, and how it should relate to halakhic thinking. The rationale behind this program was, and is, that every advance in all areas of science have their implications in halakha, in Jewish thought, and in Jewish ethical thinking. And therefore, in a sense, this conference constitutes the culmination of a year's activity in which we've tried to relate cutting-edge science, innovative discoveries, and their implications for halakha. Now, the reason that we have had this conference, or are having this conference, it's not because we want to put ourselves on the map of academia. It's not because we want to appear in the middle pages of one or two newspapers. It's because we genuinely believe that the challenges of modern science are challenges which not only face Jewish people, not only face <coughs> rabbis and halachists, but they're ethical challenges of a universal nature which challenge all of human society. In a sense, perhaps in a small sense, what we're trying to do is to input into these new ways of thinking how Jewish ethicists and halachists would attempt to brace themselves to these new challenges. The point of last year's conference and this year's conference is not merely to discuss contemporary situations in the fields of bioethics, but what the future potentially holds out for us in these areas. And in many cases, the future holds out 
wonderful opportunities, but also very frightening scenarios. And we have to prepare ourselves, we as halachists, as rabbis, as ethicists, to learn what that future potential is in all its different manifestations in order to attempt to grasp how we can go about dealing with these new problems which don't really have any precedence in our literature. And the way we do this is not to find a case which seems to be identical in rabbinic literature, but to try to plumb the depth of Jewish halachic thought in order to find what are the underlying principles involved and then to try to form some sort of comparison with what is going on and which, what will go on in the next decade or so. So, in a sense, we feel that scientists who face these challenges themselves can learn much from us, can learn from halachists and ethicists, and we, rabbis and ethicists, have much to learn from them. And it is this dialogue that we are trying to constitute in these conferences. And perhaps if, even in a small way, we can contribute to the problems which are facing world society and which are of a <coughs> world nature. Perhaps if we can contribute some insights into the way to tackle these problems, to face them, and perhaps to make hard decisions as to in which areas to develop and which areas not to develop, or how to restrain ourselves in various areas and to develop other areas, perhaps in this way we can have some sort of input into this universal challenge. Thank you very much, and once again it's with deep pleasure that we welcome you all.